Let's get one thing perfectly clear. There is absolutely nothing wrong with men being the primary cook within the household. In fact, in today's day and age, in most developed nations, where many families have to be dual income households, where both the husband and the wife have to work in order to provide sufficient living for themselves and their children, the fact that many men are moving into the kitchen and are willing to share domestic responsibilities is in fact a much positive phenomenon. However, we also have to take into account of the fact that when it comes to most East Asian nations such as Korea, Japan, and China, that these countries are still very much dominated by the Confucius way of thinking, still in almost all facets of life. Let's take South Korea for example. Although on the facade, South Korean men may look gentle and seem to almost be one of the most feminine men in the world based on what you see with all of the male K-pop idols and drama actors with their mascaras and full makeups and so on. When it comes to getting themselves into the kitchen or partaking in any household duties for that matter, they are still very much on the reluctant side of the spectrum. According to a government-ran survey conducted by Kostat, the average amount of time in which the average adult Korean male spend on household chores on a daily basis was a mere 48 minutes, while Korean women on average spent four times more amount of hours on household chores, with the time being 3 hours 10 minutes. Japanese men, who have been described by the eminent social psychologist Hofstede as men who are at the very top of the social masculinity femininity spectrum, spend even less time than the Korean men on household chores, with the average married Japanese men spending mere 37 minutes on average in housework, while the women conducted staggeringly 7 times as much work, with the average being 4 hours and 23 minutes. Compare those numbers to that of almost 85 minutes of housework a day conducted by the average married man in Hong Kong and 66 minutes of housework a day by the average mainland Chinese male, the men in Japan and Korea indeed seem to be the ones who are shunning away from the kitchen much more so than their Chinese counterparts. So how did this all come to be? As after all, China is the land where Confucianism all originated from with the traditional saying, men dominate the outside, women dominate the inside. So in today's video, we will find out why the men in China have come to spend so much time in the kitchen compared to that of the average adult male in other East Asian nations, and the bigger implications that can be made in terms of where the nation of China is heading in general on a macro scale through observing the changes in the amount of time in which their men spend in the kitchen. So let's get into today's video. In my last year of elementary school, I spent a year living in Sunjin, China. And in retrospect, I can say that I've realized quite a few things about China from my memories of the experience in which I had of living in the country. First, in that life in China, especially in the more modern cities such as Sunjin or Shanghai, are in many ways not much different from that of the type of life lived in other East Asian cities such as Seoul, South Korea, or Tokyo, Japan. But at the same time, there was one very different element of China that could not even be imagined to be seen in the typical urban landscapes of Korea or Japan. And those were these huge one-child policy banners, as well as other forms of government propaganda posters that were placed on a ubiquitous basis around everywhere you went in China. As most people who are watching this video already knows, the idea of the government of your country dictating the very number of children that you can have seems to be a clear transgression of your human rights, and it is. But in mainland China, this was, and is still very much the reality of the citizens who are living within the nation. For 36 years, from 1980 to 2016, the Communist Party of China has ran the one-child policy program within the nation in the hopes of controlling the population growth rate of the nation. And in some aspects, it succeeded. However, this government program ignored the thousands of years long traditional preference in China, which was the preference to have boys compared to girls, for reasons such as males having more economic potential once reaching adulthood, compared to females in the typical patriarchic agrarian society such as what China used to be and still is to some degree in very much of its countryside areas. So without saying, the one child policy government program in China also brought vastly negative repercussions to the nation. One of such repercussions is the highly unbalanced gender ratio which currently exists in China. According to a 2007 published research by the UNFPA, 
there were 120 male births per 100 females in China. And according to a 2019 research by the National Bureau of Statistics of China, the ratio of unmarried men and women in China above the age of 15 was a staggering 152 men for 100 women. In short, there is some serious competition going on among the Chinese men if they are ever want to be married to a Chinese woman. They even have a term to describe the unfortunate men who could not succeed in the marriage competition in China, referred to as Xiangnan, or leftover men. And according to the South China Morning Post article, by 2040, there will be 44 million of such leftover men of marriageable age in China. That is 6 million more men who could not get married despite their wishes to do so than the entire population of Canada. So the Chinese men who are getting themselves into the kitchen and voluntarily engaging in culinary work to cook delicious food for their potential wives-to-be may be analyzed from a purely Darwinian perspective. That these men in China, who have been placed in a situation of extreme competition for having any chances of romantic success, have to do whatever they can do in order to appeal to the person of the opposite gender. For some men, it could be money. For some men, it could be good looks. But for many of the men in China who don't have either the good looks or the money, being a competent cook can be one of the most realistic ways in which they can appeal to the person of the opposite gender and avoid the fate of being one of the 44 million leftover men in China. But is the unbalanced ratio of men and women in China and the subsequent competition required for the men in order for them to have any chances of romantic success the only reason as to why so many of the men in China participate in cooking compared to that of other East Asian nations? The answer to that question is no. Let us take ourselves back to China in the 1960s and the 1970s. For many of the viewers who are interested in modern Chinese history, you may be aware of the fact that China went through a period known as the Cultural Revolution beginning from 1966 until 1976. Mao Zedong, the first chairman of the Communist Party of China led the movement in the name of quote-unquote eradicating bourgeoisie element which has infiltrated the government and society. But many scholars and academics now view the movement as Mao's attempt to wipe out the new ruling class which was sprouting throughout China and for him to solidify his power even further until his death. And it goes without saying that the impact of the culture revolution was truly negative for China and has set the nation back for decades. But then, some may argue that the enhanced level of social standing for women may have been one of the very few civil linings which was created as an aftermath of the Cultural Revolution. Mao Zedong is famous for his saying to quote, women hold up half the sky. And according to an article written by Elaine Du, there seemed to be a sense of freedom and liberation for women during the years of the Cultural Revolution as a consequence of women's major role during the Cultural Revolution as well as their supreme leader's expression of support for women's equality. Of course, scholars still argue for whether Mao really believed in women's equality or just showed the facade of supporting women's equality in order to utilize the female population of China for the further success of the Cultural Revolution and thus the strengthening of its political authority. But nonetheless, during this time, men who made bold claims that is in the US equivalence of quote-unquote women go make me a sandwich were subject to much danger, as if their actions and statements were reported to the authorities, they were subject to much punishment and chastising. So it goes without saying that much of the men in China during this time period voluntarily went into the kitchen, in often cases mostly out of fear, in order to also visibly show their staunch support for women's equality, as in the case of their supreme leader, Chairman Mao. And while the Cultural Revolution officially ended with the death of Mao Zedong in 1976, one cannot say that the social remnants of such a traumatizing period of history can be washed away so easily and completely. Hence, while this could somewhat be considered as rather a conjecture, or quote-unquote bro science, if you guys are familiar with gym lingo, the Cultural Revolution period of China may be considered as somewhat of a starting point for when the previously Confucius ideology dominated patriarchal men in China got themselves into the household kitchen. We should also not forget to note that other reasons that are tangible to the modern economy that is not only endogenous to China, 
such as rapid urbanization and a subsequent increase in the price of living in urban areas, leading to an increase in the number of dual-income households, as I've mentioned earlier in the video, have also very much influenced as to why the average time in which Chinese men spend on conducting household chores has increased over the years. With the enhanced level of economic standing of women within the relationship in a dual-income household, as well as the physical lack of absolute time in which the women have in which they can dedicate solely on household work, once again cannot be ignored from this consideration. So in some sense, some may argue that it is only natural for the men in such households to enhance the level of participation in conducting household chores for the balanced functioning of the particular family. Hence, to sum it all up, the phenomenon of more men in China actively participating in cooking and conducting more household chores in general, compared to their counterparts in its neighboring East Asian nations such as Korea and Japan, can first be attributed to factors that are very much unique to China, such as the repercussions of the decades-long one-child policy which was carried out by the nation's government, as well as the people of the nation having to undergo a rather extreme event throughout the nation's history such as the Cultural Revolution, which in turn had a profound impact on the nation's overarching perception on gender roles. But other factors that are also much relevant in the case of other modern nations, such as the increase in the number of dual-income households and the subsequent increase in the average economic power held by the women of the nation in comparison to previous historical levels, also has to be adequately considered as well. But, all in all, if this trend continues for the next subsequent decades, the future generation of kids in China may grow up to eat their quote-unquote grandpa's good old cooking and not grandma's good old cooking.